and you can just go into your presentation. Then and can I close this? I guess yes. yeah. Oh, you can minimize. Yes. We can hear you and we can see you. Your slides. Good. Thank you. For this. Uh, yes. Let's go down to your PowerPoint presentation down there. Yeah. So? Yeah. I believe so. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Is everything okay from the yes. virtual side? Yes. Okay. So uh, that's what I'm saying that uh, I'm a cybersecurity center director because since 2000, I introduced all the cybersecurity. Uh, almost uh, every area I still teach, but I also teach the different design courses. So with that, um, I don't know, it's a big agenda for today. I may skip some. Uh, if you get bored, you can stop many times. And we for uh, informal discussion, that's OK. And another thing, you can ask me any question related to anything. I don't feel so bad. I may not have the answer. But I will try to provide as much as I can. Uh, these are the algorithm because today's lecture is purely on AI. Uh, and I'm one of those old AI guys, uh, you know, uh, in the early 90s and continued. So uh, this is my keynote speech at uh, Neural Network Conference. And I also have uh, a technical report, AI versus AI. You can, uh, I have not published. Uh, uh, it is publicly available. And I said AI is not magic, computational logic. And when I see the practitioners and uh, young people uh, downloading that, uh, you know, GitHub or any other places running it and, and publishing left and right, uh, I don't know what is going on. That's not research. Uh, I personally feel that can be research for non-computer science, non-engineering students, like public health, like uh, civil engineering, but for computer science, that's not the research. Uh, and I think it could come in. From... I'm going to join. So why, uh, what I'm saying that AI, ML techniques, Mathematics and statistics are underlying building blocks of all computational algorithms. There are 50 plus so-called AI ML algorithms. And, and the, I just give a, a you know, tech cloud of few of those. So PNN or neural network is not the only algorithm. And why it is popular, I'll get to that. But you can see that most of them are data driven. Some are model driven and rely on the data quantity, quality, and reliability. Now, if you listen to any recent comments, it is not the data, big data, it is the quality of data what is important for any training. So you can see some are supervised, some are unsupervised. Self learning, uh, you know, semi supervised, all kinds of incremental learning. And these are out there for the last 30 to 40 years. But data tuning is one of the important things. So, for efficiently used decision support to perform detection, recognition, classification, prediction, all are similarity methods, pattern recognition. In the underlying, if you see the matching function, if you see the transfer function, if you see the loss function, they are trying to minimize the difference. So performance typically in, involves and varies with generalization and specialization. If you train it for specific problem, it can solve it better. But slight variation, it cannot help. So where the balance is, in parameter tuning, very important. Uh, and I'll talk about this because there's a big hype uh, on generative AI. 
can create new objects from existing new synthetic and text to image, even the voice to anything. Because uh, the technology already is out there, voice recognition, right? That's attaching it with the text. Uh, it, it, companies are already working on it. So no one has to type anything. You just speak, Siri or Alexa will take care of everything. So uh, here is my point, and I would like to hear uh, uh, if anybody prefer algorithm is a super set. And again, AI is not equal to ML. That's very important. And when I uh, go in uh, business school, when I talk to the, their students, uh, because they are, I said, told them, they always invite me every semester to talk about hardcore technologies, because even the business manager, they need to know something about technology to become a project manager to become, because just using the word is not going to help. So uh, one question I, in your mind, the word server, is it a software term or is it a hardware term? That's where I start. I'm not asking that question to you guys, uh, keep that in your mind, uh, but that's a very interesting thing. So uh, everything is algorithm, some of those, are AI, right? And AI belongs to symbolic AI, non-symbolic AI. Then comes the machine learning. Most of the time in those days, it's used to call connectionist and non-connectionist. And under machine learning, uh, artificial neural networks, deep neural network, then you can have many branches in here, everywhere, which I have not drawn here. That's possible. Like fuzzy logic, where it will fall. Uh, data mining, where it will fall. All are under AI. Some will be between uh, AI and ML. Again, difference, I'm trying to make it AI is symbolic, artificial life, and other research all going towards AI. And uh, the language that uh, functional language that was used, all are, uh, you know, kind of inductive learning. So inductive learning was the starting point. Uh, if X is doing that, Y is doing that, then you can have some relationship if they are uh, frequently offering. And that those kind of things came in that direction. Now, you'll see many of those are coming. Uh, and when I go to the application side, there are some narrow AI application, there are some general AI application. So uh, you, you'll see, now you care about OpenAI, general intelligence, all these terms are coming. They all are a part of this big umbrella of, as I say, 50 plus algorithms. Of course, one algorithm may not solve a problem nicely. You need the combination of those. Sometimes you need hill climbing with something else, gradient descent with something else to find you in the results. But for that, you need to understand how that technique works. So about me, uh, I researched, you know, you can see IML application uh, from 2000 to 2000, almost 15, I devoted my time uh, AI for security. I extensively used AI techniques uh, for different security problems. I see it as a problem uh, and like cloud security model and digital immunity. You can find those uh, even in uh, Computer World magazine uh, and my name were attached to those and adaptive multi-factor authentication. Uh, I hope I'm only attached to that and, and many other things. But then uh, I saw that uh, AI has been using in different ways uh, then, you know, I'll talk about why that happened. And these are my you know, kind of things. And I also worked on engineers because I'm an electrical engineer. I worked in power plant uh, uh, in my previous life. So, uh, so you can see fault detection, bioinformatics, uh, and all these are core techniques, intelligent agents, data mining, and my publications out of 300, it covers many of those. So 
so that's about me and some publications. This was the first book on uh, my PhD in specifically search and optimization. And uh, uh, in 94, I graduated on, from my PhD. Uh, and then I also uh, is one of the one of the founding people on the field called artificial immune system. And so far my recollection, this is the first book and this is the last book we uh, as a student uh, for graduate studies. Uh, so again, immunological techniques, the way body immune system is a distributed system, it's a self-healing system. And there is an analogy of how to build more robust defense system. But uh, it's can that you have to add other things. In 2009, uh, I was part of the uh, initiative on, uh, uh, I call it National Cyber Libya, that next five to 10 years, what will uh, be new technology. And I, I was a co chair on nature inspired cyber defense. Nature inspired. And many of the things been implemented uh, in Cisco tools and others. So, uh, and 2017, um, that's the advances in user authentication. And there are three critical publications. Half of this uh, is our own research. That's an adaptive multi-factor authentication and also negative selection or negative authentication. So you can Google it, negative authentication. Uh, we had a uh, project from IARPA, collaborated with MIT, and uh, the concept of negative authentication. Some areas, these are much uh, important. If you consider the multi-factor authentication, negative authentication can play an important role. So, uh, and these are some of the patents uh, already Again, you can see huge amount of AI uh, is involved. Uh, there is a company licensed it, and there are uh, other aspects, variations of. Now, as I said, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this dual filtering scheme for secure learning. Uh, and you can see AI powered uh, malware detection system and others. So uh, I think most of you know how things work. Uh, you have to give an input uh, and hit an extraction and then classification and output. If it's a classification algorithm, it's prediction and detection similarly. And as you add more layers and, and more different kinds of uh, transfer functions, it becomes uh, deep learning and uh, auto encoder and other things. So that's the uh, but from the illustration purpose, you give the you know training process, the training data, and there is a pre-processing, filtering. The model has been trained, and that's what you get from pre-trained model nowadays uh, in Chat Chat GPT or any others. And that's then within the boundary. If you have boundary, you display, you give input things and produce output. So uh, that's a training and testing of supervised. Of course, there are unsupervised or semi-supervised or uh, self-organized learning other models. What we see nowadays, mostly image-driven. There are uh, other signals are also used. Why 90% why of the work are image-driven? Can anybody say? Anybody know why that is? And I'll give my view. Why, why most of the applications are image driven? And some of you may have done other signals of your own. But why image has been taken? And why it has become so successful? Anybody has any idea? Yeah. That's right. Maybe because the hardware that was used was designed for graphic processing. Exactly. That's the one aspect. But in the software side, if you look at the range, that's a well-bounded space. Pixel, R, G, B. We will have a bit or whatever that. So 255, zero to 255. Numbers are bounded. Even though it is large, even though you see it is large, there's a whole area called uh, media forensic challenge, NIST 
have that. And you can change a little bit uh, and you can have things different, right? And, uh, and even, even if you look at the computer forensic, you know, the steganography is a well-established bit where you change few bit, one first one was the least significant bit. Least significant bit change, you can put the whole document in an image, particularly if the image is of one color, red color card. So R is all one, others are zero, zero, G and B. So if you change the least significant bit from one to zero, the color, visual color is not any different. So image manipulation, image reproduction, one is the hardware, another is that you have a very bounded space in, in real value situation, zero to one, infinite numbers, even from zero to one, if I normalize from any number. But that is not the case here. That's my view. Again, uh, mathematicians and others may disagree uh, uh, because I always thought, why only images are so popular? I see is bounded depending on the number of pixel and uh, image you handle. And you have the huge neural network. And again, in today's world, computational expense, nobody calculate the uh, you know, time complexity anymore. Right? The speed train neural networks, it hours and hours. But once it is speed trained, as if it can do everything. But that is not the case. So, and the storage, because of the, uh, you know, chip industry and uh, storage become also cheap and abandoned. And the big giant uh, cloud companies, they are offering all the space and computational power, right? In, in, in even our laptops are all quad core or mini core. So how much computational power now is embedded? In early nineties, those are not there. You had to run neural network hours and hours of two layer, three layer, and it took a lot of time. So, so, so those technological advances in hardware and platform, software platform, distributed, cluster computing, that allows these things to happen. Now, Another thing, because my interest in cybersecurity, because not, nothing is in isolation, whether it's the face recognition system or, or any other. So all are cyber enabled. Research application, right? Last 50, 60 years, starting from the standalone expert system, intelligent system, recommendation system to mobile agents, bots, and ecosystem. So AML approaches are being used for fun, entertainment, and now being used by government society. You remember that face app, and then you can change the, you know, old person become young, uh, image enhancement, um, image morphing. And all this has uh, contributed money to it. Now, those gradually become adversarial. In, uh, in every aspect. And I'll say that uh, technology, and I learned it from another well known science, technology is not neutral. Technology is not neutral. It depends how you apply it. So, sensor IoT use data collection process using AIML techniques for real world decision and action in autonomous system. Today and future will be cyber enabled putting this an additional risk of getting compromised, manipulated, destroyed remotely and much more easily than so. Someone I'm in this AI research or someone is doing security, they have to work together. 
whether it is today or tomorrow soon it is coming, any software that is released have to be certified. It has been designed, developed, uh, and re-tested by security professionals. Whoever written the code has the knowledge about code injection attack, have the knowledge about buffer overflow. They cannot just write the code. And those regulations are coming. How soon it will come? It will all depend on various geopolitical situations. Like software supply chain attack become a big thing after that solar wind attack. You may have heard in 2021, that is a big uh, issue um, that contaminated so many uh, thousands of organizations machines. So, and now you see AI applications are everywhere, everywhere. Without it, I agree because it gives the power to learn quickly from data. It gives the power, but if support, someone say, I use support vector machine, and that is AI. To me, support vector machine or regression analysis, yes, pure set of tools, they are not AI. AI has to go one step ahead, two step ahead. So, so, uh, and all this, uh, you know, now sensors are everywhere, data is collecting in large number. So need for processing are significant. So, and you also see the businesses are picking up everywhere without AI incorporation nowadays business cannot run. As if uh, all marketing, uh, even in, I'm talking myself, it, it, someone will level it as AI driven. Who knows? So, so you can see banks and all this are in this uh, Google, Facebook. After this uh, chat GPT came out, immediately, uh, uh, what is it? Microsoft added the Bing chat and then Google used BART, released BART. But BART had many issues they had to pull away. It will come up. It will come up. So, so, so the search engine will be, search engine will be more uh, informatic, concise. But I'll, but for let me talk next, next slide. So you can see the businesses. Now you can uh, stand in front of the mirror, give your uh, physics, uh, physical uh, thing, the dresses will be produced in the other part of the world and then shipping. So customized dressing and all these things uh, are getting very popular. And, and I'm always interested in this integration. Uh, you know, in Japan, uh, I was there. They have a toilet uh, and the toilet ha has some sensors and you can put some liquid. So you want to test the urine testing, pathology, stool testing, you don't have to go to the lab. Uh, it, 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 these sensors and the chemicals will collect the information in your uh, mobile app and then you give to the uh, respective. So that's the uh, things we should look for, which will, which will give a better, uh, you know, uh, healthy and improved life. So, so this is, and why I showed it, I'll tell you uh, later. So my definition for adversarial ML is should not consider the attack manipulation of input or model, but also algorithmic discrimination and bias which misled decisions or cause harm to people. That's the uh, uh, should be the formal definition of adversarial machine learning. And I've been invited to uh, San Francisco, there is a uh, conference on AI. Uh, I'll be you know, one of the panelists with other Google's uh, researchers. Uh, and I, my focus will be not only look at somebody contaminated the import or this, but at a bigger picture. And 
So you can see algorithmic discrimination occurs when automated system contribute to unjustified different treatment or impacts disfavoring people based on their race and all other things. Right? Automated AI-based tools for digital media like audio, video, image, manipulation to misguide people, violate privacy, not well evaluated and may result in misleading consumers for unreasonable profit. Violation of ethical principles, if the time permits me, I think keeping my time, I keep on going, so you have to stop me. I'll talk about, because I'm also part of the Articulate Ethical AI uh, Committee. I'm also uh, a task force member of Secure Learning System, uh, uh, task force of Articulate. So uh, we'll see uh, some of this. Uh, there are AI biasness. One is data driven. We all know that if the data is one class, a lot of data, another class, little data, then that's why I always the argument in job recruitment minority, uh, whether it's a woman or other minority, diverse people don't get the opportunity because the data collected from the large uh, man of one type, that's the data here. So, so data collection and data sampling. Right and measurement and evaluation, all this part of the data aspect, how you are collecting. And most of the survey also nowadays has a goal in mind. So that's a you know motive oriented collection. So, but very few people talk about the algorithmic bias. Very few people talk about the algorithmic bias, framing the problem. Collecting and preparing the data and interpretation of the decision. <laughs> I'll give you uh, two, three examples quickly. One of my student master's thesis, he did it on algorithmic biasness. And I gave him two use cases. One is uh, those dress selling. You have 100 possibilities, right? You can company, that company, but your algorithm is only giving top 10 on I will not say top 10, the ones which are paying the search engine. So search engine optimization is again another area. And you can give a suboptimal solution. Customer will never know. Customer will never know. So these are the all possibilities I have. It is all algorithm driven. Another example, so he did it. Another example I give, let's see simple map, Google map or any other map. I'm going from point A to point B. So I'm looking for fastest route or quickest route, right? We have two, three options. Tweaking the algorithm, little bit. Possible to one mile diversion going through a mall or going through a company which paid me, passed through me. So we don't care about that, but that's possible. Another thing is price gouging. You know, gas stations, if they increase prices uh, unreasonably, that's illegal. Someone calling and increasing the price of gas, that's illegal. But if a collaborative agent, if they work together without human involvement, who is responsible? Where the law stands there? And that's the discussion going on. I think this whole week or last week with Google, Facebook, algorithmic manipulation, transmitting the false information, disinformation, because there are hundreds of different uh, third party providers. And the platform, but the, just the platform is not the answer to me. Your pl platform is providing misinformation, so it's not just the platform. So who will be responsible? And if there's no in human being involved, that's where the real AI research should focus on for greater good. For greater good, how to make the AI 
for betterment. So, uh, and you can see, I like that this was in Asia. I like the concept of how the biasness can uh, embed the people who are collecting data from the web may have some mental inherent biasness, right? So uh, that can generate some biasness, data biasness, and then the algorithm can also have biasness. And then the people who will be selecting that, they may also have biasness, that's called biasness, and that feed into the uh, website as a decision. So you can see, uh, this biasness exists, and how to control that, that's the part of the, I will say, good, yeah, yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. That's the because that is important. The reason is all AI algorithms are guided. There is no AI, it is not possible to build AI algorithm which is random. Then we'll not call it AI algorithm. AI algorithm are guided search. But we have some examples. No, so, but, but the, 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 yes, which direction you will put the bias? See, any of these are guided such, whether it's a neural network, you are trying to minimize uh, the loss or uh, error. So you are tending towards something, and that's something you are, you are guiding the web space in that direction. And that's the guided search. Any algorithm you say, your uh, uh, search and optimization algorithm. There, you have to have a notion of mining, it's called pattern of interest. That's uh, giving you the you know, guideline. I have this pattern of interest. And the nice example in data mining uh, is uh, market basket analysis. The, oh, early days uh, with the Walmart that they show with the frequency of occurrence who buy the diaper, they also buy the uh, baby food and beer. So now the company or retailers them next to each other in the cabinet, but they'll keep it far apart so that they have to go through all other things. So this is the business. But pattern of interest, you can do it if you want to do it without any prior knowledge, you have to do some self-organized or clustering or some pattern of interest. And that pattern of interest is something that human or system do. So, but again, all search and optimization have some kind of guide. Otherwise, it will be a random search. And random search will not give you any result because I'm randomly picking this, randomly picking that. But how much guidance you will give, that will depend on how much vastness you will embed in the system. Some generally, some specificity may help one, depending on the application. So, by us, do you mean intended by us in, in a harmful way or in an algorithmic way? Exactly. That, that, in that, algorithm by us to work the result that right. But if that bias may profit to the business and harm to the company, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the not the sort of adversarial bias that someone intentionally put into the algorithm such your yeah right, because any algorithm you have a goal. Goal may be maximizing profit. Minimizing loss, efficiency. So there is a part or whatever you call bias of objective or goal. Now, how that then you have to add constraint to balance that part. And that constraints make things much more interesting from the algorithmic perspective. Uh, uh, and that may balance out that, okay, I'll make profit, but 5%. Okay, 
rest I'll distribute in my uh, algorithmic way that it gives more uh, better quality uh, engine or some more uh, other things uh, that amenities in the car if it is a car optimization. So if you move the profit to a level uh, and then work it out on the algorithmic aspects, that may be one way I'm, I don't know. The OA now is in the medical field, now all the telemedicine, everything is online. We don't know in old days, uh, representatives used to come to the doctor, hey, we have this uh, product, it works for this, and we have study, control study. Now there's nothing like that. They'll be advertising and also pressure from the uh, pharmaceutical, put it public, put it public, put public. So where is the, and if they see there is a large population of diabetic patients and push this new product to them without thought of value, because controlled experiments are one thing. And when you go out, that's another meaning. So where is the balance? That's why the ethical aspect is. So here I am giving the example I was just telling you that uh, there are a lot of options, but the system is not showing this one. And there is a underhand handshaking by two algorithms, right? And, and, and the patient has an article that how the antique prices are very high. That you could give, and the two uh, uh, come out collaborative agents started from very higher than what it should be. And uh, uh, of this thing, unless you disclose it, that's where it comes the explainable AI, interpretable AI. Focus should be on, on those areas. I think uh, this is another kind of biasness. Uh, it, these are all in the literature. Uh, and you can see in old days, picture speaks thousand words. Nowadays, no. Anyone with a smartphone can now make deep fake. See, deep fake was termed came to policing the uh, face recognition system. But deep fake concept was for fun, entertainment, and all these things. But uh, now become this thing, and you can see changing the face and all these things are coming in a big way. The face recognition system also used in uh, courts found to be um, risky and many times it discriminates people of color. And that those are the things where most of the face recognition system use some kind of data. So that should be taken into consideration. So this is a, again, uh, a compilation from this source, I like it because how the biasness can come from in different domain. Uh, this shows in medical domain. Unequal access and resource allocation, discriminatory health process and biased legal decision making. This is in the justice system, you can see Discriminatory data come, may come from other social media collections, sampling bias, lack of representative data sets. This part is the, in the algorithmic part. I design and deploy. As I say, that. Uh, So, AI ML, uh, and I'm advocating this, and this slide you can find in the background. AI has dual goals. And not only that, and because my cybersecurity research was based on this, I used to develop AI techniques for providing defense in depth, proactive, reactive patches. Authentication, access control testing, because fudge testing nowadays, AI-based fudge testing are much, much better for any other software testing and surveillance. So uh, uh, 
intrusion detection, intrusion prevent. That's a set of value. And at the same time, uh, AI being used for interruption of services, taking control, you know, preventing patch and all other things. Malicious, the activity will be the effect will not be, will be used to develop sophisticated language. Let's see, bound to happen. There was a, in, in 20, 25 years when I was 95, I was 22, there was a notion that uh, if someone finds a bug in a software, you report to the company, right? That you have a, or whoever technology, and there was a 30 day period of what? By that 30 day period, they will uh, find a solution and jointly announce it that the bug was uh, reported by such a such person, and we have the fix now. That model has got as soon as any software hardware is released, all testing trial, they immediately there are companies who will focus on finding the bug, finding the weakness, finding the software supply chain in a module. And where the law is, their argument is, and that's one of them. If you go, you see, their argument is, if you can sell a buggy software and make money, I can sell bugs. Do you see the point? So, now who will purchase those bugs? This, uh, Obmines of different kind, and nation state, and whoever pay the money, they will sell the bug. That's the, situation now. So, so, and with that in mind, you can see AI can use in many different ways. I have to move fast. And this is, uh, this is, you all know that uh, uh, I have some uh, colleague in auto industry. They, I always say it's a wastage of uh, auto industries developing self-driving car. It may work for trucks and others, but human like to drive and why, why don't you develop self-driving drones? That should be, uh, it will not clog the road. Congestion will not be there, but it is coming. You can, you can see the uh, air taxis and others are coming. Uh, there was a uh, exo exhibition in Dubai. There are a couple of models, very interesting. So you can see how, uh, and I'm moving it fast. Uh, there was a recent study and published, you can see, uh, 22nd February 22, that changing the, this old lady, uh, original voice, I need urgent medical assistance. Uh, and he translates to with a little bit of noise, uh, all is well, just a little fever. So why someone will do that? We don't know. Uh, or it may be reverse, just uh, changing it to something uh, and, you know, Siri, Alexa, I don't know how many uh, of you, uh, nowadays everybody use it, uh, and my daughter in San Francisco, their lights are switched on and off, everything is done like this uh, voice activated things. But to activate that Alexa, that system has to continuously listen to me till I use the word. Sometimes they activate. Perception that only when I call that name, things it is not that way. Always sensing, but how many people know about that? So, so this is the typical training, and the noise is added in different kinds that become adversarial attack, uh, and uh, then you can see different uh, ways the attack can happen in different applications. I think many of you are already in the field, so I, I'll skip that. So in the model changing or the architecture, you just change the weights carefully so that it, instead of showing seven, it is showing eight. So these nodes and weights are changed. And uh, so it is, that's the part of the algorithmic or model change. 
Then came this generative AI uh, thing. Uh, it is nothing new, but it brings a different perspective of you have trying to train it in a positive way, and also you have something generative. It could use it, you can increase the coverage of this actual model. So it is not trained only to specific thing, but it's a broader coverage. So it works, there is a discriminator where the, where you take the information and train it. That is the regular way of training the neural network. But now you have a generator adding some extra noise and try to see if it can go through. That's the whole thing, if it can go through. And if it goes through, that extra noise is also can be considered uh, as an attack. So there are different kinds of uh, data poisoning, you can say. Uh, it can be labeled in different ways. Poisoning availability, backer poisoning, targeted poisoning, subpopulation poisoning, and this attack capabilities, how they attack, and what kind of model it attacks. So this is a, a nice survey. Uh, you can see it is not only affecting the deep neural network, linear regression and others, support factor machines, and application domain includes provision, tubular data and all these things. So, uh, so that's the, MITRE has a big, uh, MITRE corporation, you know, it, 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 provides a lot of information about cybersecurity and related things. Because AI ML now become a cyber enabler, they uh, also feel that it should be addressed and AI ML attack matrix be developed. So it looks like this. It's a very comprehensive reconnaissance how you can create um, techniques to do the reconnaissance of the AI ML techniques. There are seven techniques. If anybody interested, they can go to the atlas.mitral.org. And there are four techniques to know about the uh, model details form for hacking purpose. So you can see under each category, they have number of techniques they classify and the impacts. So interesting thing is the impact evade ML model. Denial of ML model size, spanning ML system with chef data size, and things like that. That's the what the uh, the fact will be in this technique. So we need to have secure AI ML systems, right? And uh, I'm going to talk about the one of our work. That's not the only one, but uh, you know I like to promote mine. So, <laughs> so one of our, like, it seems very promising, it's called dual filtering. So what is dual filtering means? Dual filtering means that we already have a lot of method for uh, input data filter out there. Hundreds of publications, thousands of publications. So you filter the input data on different filtering technique based on different uh, 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 type of poisoning. So that's there. So what we added, we not only did that, we also added an output filter. So the output filter help if the model has been modified. If the model has been modified, the output filter will prevent that. And output filtering is done is a totally different approach. So, so that's the, it's not the identical model. So if anything, uh, presumably it can detect it because basically decision is the critical thing we know which will affect the world, what decision it will give. And that's the output filter. And there is a knowledge transfer between the input and output so that it is a context awareness uh, and some of the concept of immune, immunological computation. So these filters are made uh, in a different way than these filters. So that's the uh, illustration. You can see input, the filters. So filters also change 
and the word adaptive you will see in all of my work. So, uh, so idea is that uh, the filters uh, with different set of filters will work on the model and uh, the output filters are designed in a different way uh, and work in coordination with the input. So we can correctly uh, map the input and output. This is my question. What kind of features are you looking for when they're filtering the incoming data? So, so the, as I said, there are 100 plus different filters, Kalman filters and any other okay, noise so filters are there. We did not invent anything. We have a library of filters mm -hmm. of different classes. And depending on the data set, which filter will be appropriate, that is determining adaptive filter. So there is no predefined filter. There is a library of filters and uh, from there it is. And here, uh, it is it, 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 uh, negative space or complement space. The last piece of that, my talk is the generative AI. So, uh, you know, they're increasing and far reaching, right? This language model, there are limitations. So, Listen, learn from the past. Search and optimization are fundamental to all AI algorithms. AI algorithms use similarity measures to provide guided search in representation or problem space. Most AI algorithms are probabilistic, require conversion into decision and recommendation space. So, performance of AI algorithm largely depending on Parameter tuning, mapping function, encoding scheme, distance measures, recognition methods, and meta heuristic. Now, this pre trained model that you get, they consider all these things for the delivery of whatever that is. Right? Hybridization is one of the important things that uh, the industry is still picking it up. That there are, as I said, 50 plus algorithms. Uh, if we take benefits of some of those, you can make them more stronger, more flexible. So, as there is no single medicine which can solve diseases, there is no single uh, technique which can solve all kinds of problems. You need to have integration in a way that provides better performance. Evolutionary computation, how many of you have heard of the name? Computation. Um, it is for 50 years. Shows many, many things that Chat GPT has shown now. Has done. It has been already proven, but it's not in that large scale. To create music, it could, uh, and I'll show some. Uh, I hope I have a few slides. So all this has been done. So, so you can see that uh, I, so basically generative AI pipeline, you have the different question uh, uh, answering or natural language interface, read comprehension, different things. But on top of it, you have layers of natural language translation converting to the tokenization and translating to the. Then combine that library to give a meaningful answer, which is again interactive with the user. Human in the loop. Okay. So, so this is this is not chat GPT. Let, let me see if I can run it. Uh, there is a, uh, that's a genetically evolved, uh, I, I'll keep that uh, because running may take time. Um, so uh, it, it is there and I'm, I'm sure somebody's recording it, you can play it. Uh, 
what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? So, so you can see this is running, giving a, a dog wearing this, you know, all so this, but there are a lot of things are coming. All are from the large library of components, putting them together. Uh, and there, there's a new one, Duolingo. Uh, so it will give you uh, language app, okay? learning it from one language to another language. Uh, there are a number of tools using generative AI. You can see domain is image recognition and services are a wide variety of services. Yeah, uh, these are four principles that uh, are very important. Uh, explanation, meaningful, and knowledge limit. Unless we know about those things, you know, any algorithm showing gimmick may not solve. Some details on interpolability, explainability, and guidelines on that. Uh, some of the regulations are coming. I feel that Algorithmic Accountability Act, again, it came in again this year to protect from bias algorithm, deep fake, and other bad AI. I was saying last yesterday, or yesterday, CNN also saying that there is a panel uh, good, bad, and ugly AI. So this will come soon. And I think, thank you for listening to me. Uh, I don't want to take any more time. Okay. <laughs> On your two o'clock, we have a few more minutes. So your, your next meeting is with our research group. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has any questions, so go ahead and, and you can join us as well for the research discussion. About one of uh, 